Welcome to Whiteboard Science's lesson on the independent assortment of genes. Let's review. Remember that each human cell contains 23 maternal chromosomes and a second paternal copy of the same 23 chromosomes, leading to a total of 23 pairs of chromosomes per cell. Recall that human cells have two alleles for every gene, which are often marked by either capital letters or lowercase letters. Also remember the difference between a cell's genotype and phenotype. The genotype refers to the genetic makeup of a cell, whereas the phenotype refers to the trait that is ultimately expressed by the genes. When both alleles code for the same phenotype, the cell is deemed homozygous. However, when the two alleles code for different phenotypes, the cell is deemed heterozygous and will ultimately have the phenotype of whichever allele is dominant. Remember that during mitosis, diploid cells, which are cells with double the normal amount of DNA, will divide their genetic content equally between two daughter cells, each having a full set of DNA. During meiosis, diploid cells will divide twice into four haploid gametes, each with half the normal amount of DNA. Of these gametes, half will contain the paternal copy of a given chromosome, and half will contain the maternal copy. If we look at two parents that are both heterozygous for gene A, we can easily visualize the possible offspring genotypes using something called a Punnett square. If we line up the possible paternal gametes against the possible maternal gametes, and then add all the possibilities together, we see that there are four possible offspring genotypes from this cross. If we want to take a look at offspring phenotype, we see that three of the four possible genotypes will lead to the dominant phenotype for gene A, whereas only one of the four possible genotypes will lead to the recessive phenotype for gene A. Now let's make things a little more complicated by looking at two genes, A and B, instead of just one. If two parents are both heterozygous for both genes, then four possible gametes can be produced, each with different combinations of the alleles for genes A and B. It is critical to note that if the two genes are on different chromosomes from one another, then these four gametes will form in equal proportions. This is called the law of independent assortment, which is a big buzz term when discussing genetics. Now, the Punnett square for this dihybrid cross is a little more complex than the last one was, but follows the same principles. Lining up the possible gametes, we see that 16 different genotypes can be produced from the cross. If we want to look at phenotypes, we notice that 9 of the 16 phenotypes will lead to the dominant phenotype appearing for both genes. 3 will lead to the dominant phenotype for one of the two genes, and only one genotype will lead to the recessive phenotype appearing for both genes. This 9331 ratio will come up quite often as you study genetics. So what did we learn? First, we reviewed the idea that human cells contain 23 maternal and 23 paternal copies of each chromosome. Second, we learned that the law of independent assortment tells us that genes on different chromosomes will segregate independently from one another, leading to equal formation of all possible gametes. Thanks for watching, and good luck with studying.